What we want to do is show you some of the individual components that are go going into our short motor when we assemble it. And one of the probably the most misunderstood components uh, is a camshaft. Um, but it's also important to understand about the various types of valve lifters that exist. Here we have uh, flat tappet lifters, either hydraulic or solid, which are used traditionally on cast iron cams, your typical Chevy small block, your big block Chevy, your Holden V8, your Ford Cleveland and Windsor V8s, Chrysler V8s, six cylinder Falcon and Holden, etc. That was the, the that was the norm. Today in the V6 Holdens, in the LS motors, even in the last of the VT Holden V8 engines, we went to steel camshafts with hydraulic roller lifters. You can see the roller wheel. It's almost friction free. Whereas this setup, you have metal to metal. You have basically a lifter sitting on top of a lobe and constantly rubbing against it. Now, these have a crown. If you, and that, you can illustrate that by putting two of them together and you can rock them. Now that crown is designed for a purpose. And I'll go, I'll put the lifter on the cam lobe so you can see what I'm getting at. The lifter sits there and it's metal to metal. However, the lifter bore is machined in the block with a little bit of offset. I'll exaggerate it. It goes out. And that process is designed to ensure that the lifter rotates. As the cam lobe rotates, distributing oil on both faces, both the lobe and the lifter face. Now the camshaft lobe also has a taper ground into it. It's either that direction or that direction to ensure that the crowned surface of the lifter has a rotating interface. Now what's important, you've all, you're all aware that you install a cast iron cam and when you buy them they don't look like this. They look grey. You know, they, well, how come Sam's got this here looking shiny and polished and, you know, if I do a, a surface roughness test, it'll show me that it's extremely smooth. Well, it's important to know why those cams you buy have a grey colour. It's because they have a phosphate coating. It's a manganese phosphate. It's, a, it's an acid, actually, and it's designed to etch into the surface of the metal. And that surface is designed to hold oil. It's designed to hold lubricant so that when you initially start the engine, the cam is never dry. And the cam lifter interface aren't dry because if that happens, you wipe the lobes out. I'm sure most of you have heard that. Oh, I lost all the lobes on the cam. I lost one lobe off the cam. And very often it's because there was inadequate lubrication, even momentarily, can cause you big grief. Um, I've left the cam looking like this so you can see what it really looks like. I mean, it looks no different to a roller cam, which is just shiny metal after being ground. I've got a close-up here uh, of the cam lobes, and what I'm doing is I'm just putting a little bit of engine oil. You can see that engine oil rolling down It'll find its way all the way around the lobe. If I rotate it, it'll go down. But you know the other thing, if I take my thumb and I wipe it off, and then I take a rag and I wipe it, it's all gone. There is no oil residue left there whatsoever. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tape up these journals because we don't want to put a phosphate coating on the main bearing journals. We don't need that. Otherwise, we've just you know, got to polish it off when the cam comes out of this 
acid bath to etch the manganese phosphate onto it. Uh, I'll drop the cam in, we'll cook it up, and then I'll show you the same thing when I put oil on the phosphated cam, you'll see the difference. You'll see how it holds oil and helps you run the camshaft in. I've put the cam in a dual bath. This bath is hot water, just to heat the casting up. This one contains the phosphate. So we take it out of the hot water bath and we put it into the phosphate bath. We'll leave it in there for about six or seven minutes and we'll come back and I'll show you how it holds the oil. You can see the surface is now a grey charcoal -y colour. We just rinse it in the water solution to get the remainder of the phosphate off it. Okay, we're back again, and I just wanted to show you the uh, Parco lubrided cam. It has the phosphate coating on it. I've put it back in the straightening jig. I'm going to put some oil on it and illustrate that same situation of, to show you just how well this phosphate coating holds oil. Now, we can, as we did with the last cam, which was just a fully ground surface, if you look carefully, you can wipe that off, but it really doesn't go away. It just stays there. It remains greasy, and you can see it remains shiny and dark. That's because the oil won't buzz off. The oil stays there. The Lubrite, it's like a furry surface finish, and most of you who've installed the cam have felt that and you know what that is. That holds oil so that when you first start your engine, the interface is always wet, always has lubrication. Getting on to another subject, when you buy a cam, you take it out of the box, you always make the assumption the cam is perfectly finished and perfectly straight and it's perfect. Well, I'm just taking the tape off this center main journal and um, this is dead straight. You really want the cam to be, you know, under two thousandths. Uh, run out. You, you, I mean, it, they bend very easily. A cast iron cam or a steel cam can bend very easily in transit. Check it. Because if you think about it carefully, a cam that's bent means the centre line through the lobes is not dead true, which means the durations on each lobe will vary as straight as possible. Put it between a couple of centres, an old lathe, with a dial indicator. You can even stick it in a block and you can check it from above. But it's important to check it. And they're actually quite easy to straighten. I, I don't have to show you that now, but whoever you bought the cam off, um, ask them if the amount of run out you have is a problem. I like to see them under two thousandths. You know, minimum is better. One final thing. If you've got a cast iron cam in a Holden V8 or a Chevy small block V8, and this is part of your engine assembly, if you want to verify that the taper on the cam is good, that the lifter interface has sufficient crown, you need a couple of thousandths, put, lubricate the cam just with oil, just with light engine oil, slip the lifters in, rotate the cam at the front of the engine just with a speed handle. Watch all your lifters. Make sure they're turning. 
That's why you need to use a very light oil. Uh, even CRC, you know, just a, a something that gives you a bit of lube. If some of the lifters virtually don't turn, you know there's a problem with that block. And look, how far do you want to take it? If it's a, a race engine, you really should bush those lifter bores, which corrects the geometry of the lifter bore relative to the camshaft. And you'll always find that the lifters will turn perfectly if that process has been done correctly. The larger the cam, the more important it is for the lifters to be turning evenly, consistently, and similarly. Anyway, uh, what we'll do is uh, we'll go and have a look at a few other components before we go and do some final assembly. I brought the cam that we were showing you earlier uh, that was ground, phosphate treated, checked for straightness, and we brought it in here to measure the lobes. Now, we design lobes uh, out of our cam range uh, using some pretty powerful computer programs. We design lobes based on the requirements we think that will produce certain results in the engine packages we've designed over the years and for specific customers' needs. What's important to know is one of the reasons we do detailed measurements of lobes is to verify that the manufacturing process is producing what our designs, if you like, are asking it to produce. And that's proven to be pretty good. You know, we're, we're getting extremely good results with the profiles. We've had a lot of experience with, you know, 25 plus years of dyno testing to know what works in a specific application. We take into account all variables such as valve train, compression, capacity, etc. Anyway, you can write 10 books about cam technology, but uh, I'm going to measure these lobes to show you how we come up with a dial-in figure. Okay, that's it. We now will show the results of both. And the fact is, we use these results to help you, the consumer, be able to dial in the cam with a minimum amount of fuss. But what's important for you, the person who's installing the cam, and one of the reasons I, 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 I went um, to the effort of showing this measurement process, is the computer immediately can give us a number which tells us where to dial the cam in, in other words, the lift at top dead centre we need to use. And what I can do, this is a, a cam card report, but if we get a, a more detailed report, what we can do is we can go down there and we can get a, a lift report by lobe, and this is very, very detailed. But here we have lift at top dead centre, 51.7 thou, in other words, 52 thou. What that means is, with the piston at top dead centre, the lobe, the intake lobe on number one, has to be lifting 51, 52 thou. If you do that, your intake centre line will be, as I've suggested it should be, 106 degrees after top dead, and your exhaust is 114 before top dead, which means you don't need a degree wheel, you don't need any bullshit at all. All you need, you need a dial indicator as we'll show you in the engine assembly room. And we're going to be assembling an LS1, but it makes no difference. If you have these figures, the lifted top dead centre figure, you can dial in any cam with a minimum of fuss with only a dial indicator. And the price of a dial indicator these days, you can all afford one, they're pretty cheap. Look, in terms of uh, camshaft degrees, do I advance it, do I retard it? These are questions we're always asked. If we gave you a figure on the cam card where you should put it, basically that's where you should start. We have tested every single profile in just about every engine 
that we're likely to sell you a cam for. That being the case, the best starting point is where we tell you. Nothing wrong with advancing or retarding a cam if you're trying to achieve a certain end result. You'll advance a cam if you want more low to mid RPM torque. You'll retard a cam if you want more mid to top end horsepower, sacrificing a little bit of torque. Those are rules of thumb and they don't always apply. So always ask the question of whoever you buy a cam from, whether it be us or whether it be some other camshaft manufacturer.